Welcome. Welcome. First of all, congratulations. As I've told you a million times already, this film completely stole my heart. It was the first film I invited for the Discovery program. And to be completely honest, it also kind of shaped the vision for the program because I knew when I saw it that it was exactly the kind of art and passion and directorial vision that we wanted expressed. So first of all, thank you so sincerely for this film and for your work. Thank you. I'd love to start by asking you both the same question. How did, how did the stories from the Chestnut Woods come to be? Uh, first, thank you for staying in the, in the cinema. <laughs> uh, uh, it came to be because it, it's very close to where I grew up, this region. Uh, and uh, as a child, I was a mm, lot of times fascinated that it's empty, basically, because you saw this today, of course. You saw all these villages that were left abandoned, and it's all on the border. At the same time, it was very mysterious because you had these chestnut woods, and you had this river, and uh, then you had these stories, which were like uh, mostly fairy tales, so you could see here. And then uh, once Marina came, yeah, uh, Marina came with um, with um, a theater play actually from Hanoch Levin called Requiem, which had some Czechos stories inside. And uh, we said, wow, this could actually be a movie. And uh, I don't know, it was me or you, but somebody said, well, this is the perfect place uh, to, to put it in life because actually it, it could be a film about uh, a region that disappears, that, that gets emptied, let's say like that. And uh, it could be some kind of a parable uh, metaphor. And, uh, and this region uh, had all the necessary visuals uh, to make it work like we wanted, so like a sad fairy tale. Yeah. Yeah, I can add that it's difficult actually to answer, as far as I'm concerned, because first of all, it's a while ago that we started thinking about this. I think it's about twelve years, the idea. Um, but then it also the elements kind of came together from all all sources, and it was a like. A, physical need to do something and sensations and then impulses from other works of art that we kind of they kind of all got together into this um i think sensation of a of a place which <coughs> led this idea throughout the the years it's it's so meticulously researched and there's so much storytelling that goes into it how, how many years was the actual research process before you even started producing yeah i think um, you correct me if I say something stupid, but I think it was about 12 years that we started thinking about this. Mm, I was thinking about this the other day, and I think it's 12. And then um, we, we got the first small uh, support for the film in 2014, I think. Or no, 12. I, I don't know. It's 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 been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> one thing one thing I forgot. Uh, I think it was from the start of thinking the film. Uh, we were both thinking how to make a movie that doesn't play with this conventional way of uh, let's say psychological realism or naturalism. You know how to tell a movie that uh, tells the story like uh, the old uh, fairy tale books that we were reading from the place or or the the drawings on the churches that were these naive drawings you know how to tell a movie uh, without this classical psychology but still making a work that is not hermetic that it's you know people can understand so we were we were really like uh, this story in this place uh, was i think a perfect fit for our intentions to make a film that doesn't doesn't speak through classic naturalistic psychology, I would say, but mostly with these visuals. And uh, yeah, I hope I was clear. Yeah. As we said in the beginning, you're really the first audience to see the film, so we would love to hear some of your questions. Please raise your hands up high. Yes. What was the name of that game that you were playing? Mora. 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 It's a game that is played uh, still, but uh, most in, mostly in the Mediterranean area. And uh, yeah, I, if you get more far from the Mediterranean Sea than 100 kilometers, you'll lose it. But all around the sea, 
yeah, they play it, yeah. And you still find people playing, and also the 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 people that played, uh, they were real people that really played it in the in these places, and they came to to show us. But then I said, yes, we will shoot with you, <laughs> so, <laughs> because nobody will play as well as you do, of course. You know, even the actor had to struggle a lot. This was very, you know, because they are quick, and you have to sum up the the sum of the fingers and to guess it in advance. So it's very very fast. Yeah. Yes. The question is, how did you veer away from the psychological realism that you discussed in your previous answer? Uh, yeah, of course I can. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know... Um, uh, one thing is that all whatever whenever you were, you would speak uh, what actually happened in the region you would come to very sad stories very very uh, painful uh, connected to poverty and so on and to, and it was all but too complex to tell in one movie first second i personally don't like so much um, authors that do uh, historical reconstructions, meaning I don't really believe that you as a director know <laughs> or you should not pretend to know how it really was, you know, so you should not even uh, uh, try to trick the audience into this. Uh, I very much uh, prefer the way to to tell you a fairy tale, you know, which you can understand more vaguely and get your own uh, maybe ideas of what was really happening. You know. And so, uh, as a natural way of thinking in this direction, uh, also, beside all these inspirations I already talked about, so there, there are beautiful, uh, naive drawings in this region, in the churches, or maybe sometimes even in the houses. And, uh, and as I said, lots of fairy tales. Uh, so, yeah, it came natural that we would like to tell what actually happened through this uh, more... I, I can say caricature. Can you use this in English? Yeah, caricature way or uh, yeah, naive, naive fairy tale way. Yeah. Yes. The question is, how much of the region is as it is presented in the film, or how much you had to reconstruct, if anything? That's a very good question. What would you say? That's a, that's a big compliment, yeah. We had to do a, a lot because uh, when I came there and as a uh, viewer, I would say, oh, this is great. But of course, when you put the camera there and uh, we had to actually rebuild everything, it's shot there, like all the interiors of the houses, it's shot there. But uh, basically, the set design had to do it anew, paint it anew, because it was also run down and it was dangerous also for, you know. So basically, to to shoot those times, we had to rebuild it, even though we do, we did it there, which was uh, hell for the production, of course, because it's you know it's uh, I will not start, but it was <laughs> not easy. And uh, also, the the shots that you see at the beginning, these landscape shots. Uh, it was me, myself, going afterwards, just me and the camera, because I'm also a director of photography. So I, I did a lot of shots uh, from the film when all the crew was already home. And um, and I had to really try hard to get some shots where it, they were not contaminated with either destroyed or new uh, things, you know. So it was not easy at all. Yeah. It, when, you, when you get there now, you will not see it like that. And uh, only the river, yeah, and the woods, of course. Yeah. Jumping off what you said, Marina, can you talk about the financing of this film? Was it difficult to get a project like this off the ground? Because to be honest, I'm not sure if I could, I, if this could be financed in North America. Um, yeah, it was a big challenge, actually. Um, I think mostly because when we started working on it, we had a very precise idea about the atmosphere that we wanted to create. And... As a debut film, we we were super happy to receive a support from the Slovenian Film Center, but that support is by by rule a small, I mean, relatively small, small, small grant, considering the fact that this is a historical piece. So um, we started with the with the big ambition and a very precise ambition that I think we both were tuned about, and relatively small money so we um it took us a while to 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 have the 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 money grown but we were we were lucky we got some 
really helpful people on board, co-production, uh, people that actually believed us for some reason um, and trusted us, um, but it took time. It was very important, I guess, because it, as you can imagine, a script for this film, it's very, what is it, you know? I mean, it's like people were reading and were saying, what is this, is it a fairy tale, it's not a fairy tale, is it serious? And so we, we had to every time convince them with pictures because the script itself was not uh, enough. And so we were getting a lot of pictures. We even did the photo shooting of some uh, potential scenes, you know, because it was the only way to get uh, money. It was not easy, of course, yeah, because for such projects, uh, it's, yeah, it's not. Please don't give up. Yes. <laughs> Stunning cinematography compliment. Yes. Um, yeah, on that note, what, uh, what did you shoot on and, and what was the vision behind the cinematography? The question is, what did you shoot on and what was the vision behind the cinematography? Uh, thank you first for the compliment. It's for Ferran Paredes, who is a very good uh, director of photography. Um, you know, since I uh, do also director of photography for other films, and I wanted to frame this film, so I wanted to be behind the camera, I uh, took a person that I knew is good with light. And this was my first condition. I said, okay, this film will not work if the light doesn't work, if the atmosphere doesn't work. And so he accepted it in this old school. He studied in Rome, so they had this old school. Uh, you know, his professor was the Fellini's uh, DOP, Giuseppe Rotuno. So they were really old and slow. And uh, yeah, but it was good for this film because it looked like, uh, you know, from another time. And uh, so he took concentration on light. I took concentration on, on framing. And I think that's that's a good uh, one got a good uh, thing. The second, I think you're technically asking me, no? So technically it's mixed 16 millimeter with 35. Uh, and this was from the beginning uh, our will, wish and uh, that it has to be shot on film. Also because we saw some films that tried something like that. And because of money and you know they shot it in digital and somehow the magic didn't happen and it's it's very difficult to explain but uh, sometimes it's like that in film you know you watch something and it doesn't convince you sometimes it does and maybe it's because of the texture the color yeah it's a mystery i think uh, film material it's a mystery and that's why it's so nice yeah. yes at the back The question is, what was the reaction to the Slovenian people of this film? But you're the first people to see this film. <laughs> so, it, but it, is, is there a plan to show it in Slovenia? Yeah, it, it, will, it, it will be premiered in Slovenia in uh, two weeks, no? It's on the Slovenian National Film Festival. So if you will follow Slovenian news, <laughs> <laughs> you know if we get something in uh, two weeks. Yeah, but uh, I can't tell. Can you tell? I mean, we... Sorry. I think people, are, those that know about it, are, are quite uh, excited about it because it's two young people or a young crew that did uh, a film about old people. So what is this? And it's uh, it took a long time and some people know about it. So it's like, why were they doing this for so, so long? So I think s some people are quite um, are looking forward to see it. But three people saw it, no? <laughs> I think three Slovenians saw We can... <laughs> Uh, look, they are looking forward, yeah. <laughs> yes. Could you talk about the mixed dialogue and if it's really like this in the region with the mix of Slovenian and Italian? That's exactly how it was in this region because now they speak mostly Italian. And um, uh, this was my, my personal, um, let's say, uh, postulate. Yeah, demand from the beginning that um, it has to be this schizophrenic mix of languages because uh, this is what I always saw when I went there. And also, for example, you had families speaking Slovenian dialect, but because they were in the Italian country, they were just writing in Italian, you know. So the letters of the people of the immigrants, they were in Italian, but when they would tweet, they would speak Slovenian. So, you know, this border created very uh, confusing and... Uh, also, st difficult to understand situations if you're not from there, you know. And these people were even uh, ashamed of that in a way, you know, because uh, yeah, because they didn't know if they are Slovenians or Italians or whatever, you know. So it's a very, very complex 
topic and I, I thought it's not possible to expose it really especially not in a fairy tale because it's it would require a documentary just on that if you so I wanted just to be uh, like it was in the sense that I wanted to mix these different uh, languages uh, and I'm happy that there is these scenes with the kings for example at the end because the kings they speak uh, uh, Slovenian from the book and which for them was like the Slovenian from the old fairy tales. And uh, it's nice for me personally, of course you lose it, but uh, to hear the, a, a king speaking Slovenian to the Italian guy, this for me is very good. <laughs> I mean, I, I can also tell you that I, I come from Nova Gorica, which is a bordering town to Gorica, which is a split town. It's like West and East Berlin, but it's on the Slovenian-Italian border. And uh, most of my generation spoke Italian. None of the Italians spoke Slovenians, you know, so I thought it's very interesting that how this, uh, I don't know, how these languages uh, overdo other languages. It's a mystery, you know, but uh, yeah, I hope it worked for you and that it gave some some sonoric. <laughs> well, how lucky are we that you're here speaking English to us, <laughs> even it's <laughs> crazy. Yes, yes. The question is, is the area still in inhabited and are there a lot of other areas like that that have fallen into a decline of habitation? Uh. Well, this this area is uh, I don't know how to say you, but the, the in most of the villages there is only one or two old people still living there. So uh, if you go there in winter, it's complete desolation. But what happens in summer? Lots of emigrants from also Canada or Australia they come back because they come back to there now that they can afford it, of course, with the plane. Some come back in summer, but just as a summer vacation. Uh, in the winter is completely desolate. And uh, the second question, in Slovenia, I wouldn't say that, that there are other regions like that. I think in the world, yes, you know, that's why I thought the film will speak uh, to a broader audience because it's the same story everywhere on the tough borders. But in Slovenia, this one was particular because it was on the border with Italy, which was the border with the West ones, you know, Slovenia was Yugoslavia, so it had this kind of uh, socialist, communist uh, ideology. On the other hand, beside you had Italy, so it was very strict border. And uh, on the other borders, Slovenia didn't have such a strict border for so many time because this was from '45 when the Second World War ended until '91, uh, basically. You know, so yeah, I think. That's yeah. they were they were really forgotten from both sides because the Italians forgot about them. It was not developed enough, no industry, nothing. The Slovenian side didn't want so much people because they had soldiers there, you know. So it was, uh, yeah, it was. They were not really supported, and so it got empty. Yeah. Yes. Could you speak a little bit more about the Three Kings? Uh, what do you say about Three Kings? Um, Three Kings, basically, they come from the this very initial theater play that we worked on. So um, it was a very um, playful, I think, um, element in that uh, particular play of Hanoch Levin. Um, so we kept it, but we modulated it in, in as Gregor said, in, in a way that there, is, there are Slovenes maybe coming from either the the capital or they represent something official but from from the from the other side of the border um, and I think for us it really when we edited the film it really kept the the lightness or the playfulness of the film and I think it when I saw it now it for me it works at some point things get um, heavier and then they come and that they, they I think remind us that it's actually just a some kind of a play memory that we are not really there, but in some displaced reality, maybe. And and that there is life after life, no. So, uh, but one thing that, that you forgot is that uh, when we decided to put the three kings, is because in this region you have uh, something called Koleda, and it's uh, before Christmas or wait because. It's they go around houses and uh, the children, three children, go around houses dressed in the three kings, and they ask for good the goodies for uh, fruits or whatever. Of course, this was in the 60s. Now there is no children. But yeah. <laughs> speaking of fruits, so when Gregor and I met, he the first question he ever he asked me was, 
I have a very important question for you. Where do you get the best fresh, fr fresh fruit in Toronto? Gregor is a pomologist, and I truly didn't know how to answer him. I said Chinatown. So the question is actually for all of you. Where do you get the best fresh fruit? <laughs> Kensington, OK, great. OK, anyone else? St. Lawrence Market. St. Lawrence Market. Okay. Gregor is writing a book on pomology. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. So you have three options. I remember them. Listen, like we said, you are the first audience in the world to see this film, but it's screening two more times. Tell your friends, tell your family, vote for it at tiff.net slash vote. It really does make a difference. I'm obsessed with both of you. I would love to keep talking forever, uh, but unfortunately that's all the time we have. So I just want to thank you.